Welcome to Creating the Ideal Organization, a podcast from the Organizational Dynamics Community at the University of Pennsylvania, produced to inspire purposeful leadership practice and transform organizational experience. I'm your host, Steve Hart. Today I'm speaking with Matt Keating, Distinguished Graduate of Organizational Dynamics and a 2018 Graduate Award recipient. Matt is a financial analyst for a Fortune 500 aerospace company in the Philadelphia area. Typically, his work involves planning, organizing, maintaining, and reporting on the financial structure needed to support worldwide aircraft modification and retrofit. He embarked on his eight-year organizational dynamics journey in 2009, earned two master's degrees, and along the way, developed both personally and professionally. Welcome, Matt. So as I inferred in the introduction, you had such a great time in the dynamics program that you actually got two master's degrees from it. What compelled you to take both the MSOD and the MPhil? And what did obtaining these degrees mean to you in your career? Well, Steve, I had several reasons for embarking on my organizational dynamics journey, and a few of them were purely economic. When I first started in 2009, we were on the tail end of the economic crisis. And at work, we were facing a series of downsizings. I felt I needed to boost my skill sets in order to remain competitive in that environment. The good thing is my company is really uh, encourages employee education and has a very generous tuition reimbursement program, but you have to use it in order to receive that money. Another reason was simply the pull of opportunity, to use a phrase from one of my favorite professors. Here was an opportunity to get a graduate degree from a globally recognized Ivy League institution. The only obstacle for me was getting up the nerve to commit to it, and that was a simple obstacle to overcome. Um, completing my degree has not really changed the structure of my career. I do the same job that I did when I started the program, and that's my choice. I do think I do it better. Tasks are not as difficult, and I have a broader awareness of multiple factors which affect a decision or a project. I have a much better awareness of the human component of my and other organizations. I'm definitely more confident, and I know UPenn gave me that. Completing these two degrees was challenging both intellectually and also physically, and I met that challenge. So I'm pretty confident that I can meet other challenges that I encounter in my career. Another aspect, Steve, which I'll come back to again, is the people. I met such incredible people at UPenn. The network you build as a student and as an alumni is incredibly val valuable. I know that in any challenge I have a network of professors and accomplished fellow alumni that I can reach out to for advice. That's pretty comforting safety belt when your career ride gets bumpy. Great. Well, I, you know, given the length and the, the, the commitment that you made to obtain both of these degrees, on reflection, I wonder what your personal journey was like over those nine years it took you to finish the program. So what stands out for you most on that journey, both personally and professionally? You are right. Over the course of nine years, everyone's going to change. And I definitely know that I changed during this program, and I know it was for the better. I can feel it. The way I think about things, the way I interact with people, how I read the news. Over the course of my two degrees, I took 20 courses, and every course gave me some one important thing that directly applies to my life. I actually made a list about that once. In the previous question, I mentioned the physical challenge. That, for me at least, was very, very real. To stay on course for five years for the first degree, Attending classes, doing readings, writing papers, after working a pretty demanding job was a real test. I'd done it before, so there, were, there was definitely an element of just keep on keeping on, but it was certainly a challenge. It's also important to keep focus on your family during this journey. You can't lose sight of the other people in your life, and they must also support what you're doing. I was lucky in that my son had just entered college when I started Organizational Dynamics. And I think this gave us a strong basis of communication. We were both doing the same things. I could help him with research questions, and I could understand a little bit deeper when he was frustrated by a particularly hard class or assignment. 
Good. So it's contributed significantly, both personally, professionally, and sort of uh, giving you a sense of a uh, framing of uh, or how to frame issues and concerns and questions you might Absolutely. come across. Absolutely. That's cool. That's great. Now, I know from your participation in my own class that I, I sort of view you as a compulsive learner. You seek to understand and implement what you learn into practice. Um, one of the things that I think is a hallmark of this program is our ability to try to uh, turn theory into practice. So what specifically from your experience in the program have you applied in your work area? Well, Steve, the little picture of my career is basically I'm an accountant. I crunch numbers all day long. The bigger picture, however, is that I'm an important part of a project management team. And this is where organizational dynamics really help me. In business and even in life, we work on a number of sequential or concurrent projects. And I didn't fo specifically follow the project management track in organizational dynamics. Several of my classmates and friends did, but it certainly is a theme that is embedded in almost every class. And each class, in effect, is a project. And I think this greater awareness of project management has really helped me in my career and also in life in general. Another area where organizational dynamics has changed and improved me is mentoring other people. For nine years, I was surrounded by some of the most incredible people I've ever met. Scholars, leaders, hard workers from all sorts of backgrounds and from all around the world. This experience has really enabled me to mentor others. In your career and also in life, you really do have a responsibility to guide those coming behind you be they new employees, your children, or even some young person you know from your neighborhood. You want to help them avoid the mistakes that you may have made and, and make it a little bit easier for them. Not only is it important, it's also good. I get a wonderful feeling when someone I helped, even if only a little bit, succeeds. I truly share their success and in their happiness. Right. I want to take this opportunity to uh, dig into your mind a little bit around uh, a demanding aspect of the program, which is the writing of the capstone. And uh, I know that you've done that, obviously. Twice. Uh, twice. So <laughs> uh, talk to me about how you approach this. Writing my first capstone was an intense experience. I had a wake-up call about midway through the program when I attended a capstone luncheon and realized, with two years still in front of me, that I thought I was behind where I should be. And that energized me greatly. First, I had to choose a topic. And when you're gonna invest so much time and energy into a project, there's that word again, capstone is a project. It had to be better, it better be something that you were really interested in so it seems less work than a personal exploration. So I took about six months to come up with the topic of my first capstone, which frankly was about me. I wanted to explore deeply why, at age 50, I decided to go back to school and what affected my ability to learn. And there's actually some fascinating science involved about life stages and learning theories. I chose a great advisor who was also very interested in this topic, and we still talk to this day. Since the capstone was about me, I think I rediscovered a lot about myself in the process and learned some real scientific reasons why I and others behave as we do over the course of our life. In the middle of my second program, the MPhil, I heard a rumor from a fellow student that the MPhil did not even require a capstone. I was elated. However, it was short-lived since the administration informed me that, oh yes, you need to do another one. This time my topic was different and it was professionally a bit of a stretch. I explored artificial intelligence and specifically looked at what was real, likely and near term, versus what was still hypothetical and way far off. Um, you know, in the media, these two categories get mixed up a lot. So what's the truth? And this required a professional stretch for me, an accountant, to understand a lot of technical ideas and then to evaluate their impact on social structures. And I think I answered my question too. AI is here and it's increasing every day, but in the foreseeable future, it will probably be more evolutionary and grow incrementally than be an abrupt and surprising revolt of the robots kind of thing. So you've come to the end of uh, two very rigorous programs. You've done remarkably well in both of them. 
Uh, you told me before we began today that now you're just sitting around watching television. <laughs> but I know that you are, as I said before, a very committed lifelong learner. So what kinds of things are you thinking about in the next uh, growth spurt of your career and your life? That's a good question. I think I'm taking, well, graduation for me was only three months ago. So I'm really not like uh, a couch potato yet, You're but some downtime, some downtime and, and actually doing a lot of thinking about many, many different things that maybe got put on hold a little bit uh, when I was totally focused on school. So, you know, one of those is sort of re-engaging or catching up with a lot of the things that I may have uh, deferred, given my family, maintaining my house, uh, a lot of things like that. But there's something else out there, um, something I'm very, very interested in, and I just don't really know what it is. But uh, I know it's going to burst into brightness at some point, and I think uh, I'll definitely have the capabilities to pursue it uh, however I want to pursue it. I know one of the things that we challenge people to here is come with the questions that you have, not necessarily the, with the answers preformed. So it's great that you've walked away still, still asking questions yes. in many ways. Wonderful stuff. So uh, one of the things I wanted to get you involved in today was to give uh, people who are in your sort of uh, bracket of life uh, some confidence about getting into this program here. What advice would you give to a prospective student in our program who has maybe had a, you know, a seasoned professional life, but is nonetheless still seeking some answers to critical questions? Well, Steve, there's a lot of factors that go into pursuing a graduate education. There's time, the stress, difficulty, money, of course, and the reputation of the institution and most importantly, the return on your investment. Each person's going to approach those factors differently. And you need to make a well-informed decision based on a critical analysis of all these factors. You are going to make a big investment of time, money, and energy, and you want to know, as sure as you can be going into it, that this is going to pay off. For me, UPenn and organizational dynamics has been profound. It truly was one of the best things I did in my life. I'm personally very proud of what I did, and the people around me are, to a somewhat lesser degree, nonetheless also proud. And finally, the people you will meet and get to know may, in fact, be the best part of this program. They are across the board truly outstanding and amazing. You will meet people from around the world, and you will remain in touch with them, and I certainly have. Thank you very much. So congratulations on, num on two things. First of all, for getting through two arduous programs and, and also for being a, a, a graduate award winner in 2018. I know it's very well That was well a surprise. It's a surprise, but it was very well deserved. And thanks for stopping by today to share, share your thoughts on this podcast. And thanks for asking me. <laughs>